So this is a video from, I believe it was 2010, David Horowitz engaging on a college campus with a quote unquote pro-Palestinian activist, but he, he uncovered her true ideology against not only Israel, but against Jews, and it is chilling. Take a listen to this. Yes. Good evening. I uh, just wanted to say thank you for coming to campus tonight and uh, presenting your point of view. It's always valuable to have two sets of uh, views going on at the same time. Um, very useful. Uh, my name is Jumana Imad Musa Ahmed Al Bahri, um, and I'm a student here at UCSD. Uh, I was uh, reading your literature. I found that much more interesting than the talk, and um, I found some interesting things about the MSA, which is an organization that's very active on campus, and it is hosting uh, our annual Hitler Youth Week. You should come out to those events. Um, if you could clarify the connection between the MSA and jihad terrorist networks, because yeah, you last, last I checked, we had to do our own fundraising, and uh, we never get help from anyone. So if you could clarify the connection between UCSD's MSA, or if you don't have such information, if you could connect other MSAs on UCs, because the connection wasn't too clear in the pamphlet, just if you could clarify. Okay. Will you uh, condemn Hamas here and now? I'm sorry, what? Will you condemn Hamas? Would I condemn Hamas? As a terrorist or a genocidal organization? Are you asking me to put myself on a cross? So you won't. I, I actually have had this experience many times. You didn't read the pamphlet because the pamphlet is chapter and verse. Uh, the main connection is that the MSA is part of the Muslim Brotherhood Network as revealed in the documents. I don't think you understood what anyway, I meant by that. I is, meant if I say something, I'm sure that I will be arrested for reasons of Homeland Security. So if you could please just answer my question. If you condemn Hamas, Homeland Security will if arrest you. If I support you. Hamas, because your question forces me to condemn Hamas, if I support Hamas, well, I look really bad. If you bad. don't condemn Hamas, obviously you support it. Case closed. <laughs> I have had this experience, uh, I give you, I had this experience at UC Santa Barbara where there were 50 members of the Muslim Students Association sitting right in the rows there. And throughout my hour talk, I kept asking them, will you condemn Hezbollah and Hamas? Uh, and none of them would. And then when the question period came, the president of the Muslim Students Association was the first person to ask questions. And I said, you know, before you start, will you condemn Hezbollah? And he said, well, that question is too complicated for a yes, no answer. So I said, okay, I'll put it to you this way. I'm a Jew. The head of Hezbollah has said that he hopes that we will gather in Israel so he doesn't have to hunt us down globally. For it or against it? For it. Thank you. Thank you for coming and showing everybody what's, what's here. And you're wearing a, a terrorist uh, neckerchief. If you understood. No, you, know, no, you didn't hear the lady. You Could you please question, answer my question? You, get a, you don't get to make a speech. This yes, quote unquote pro Palestinian activist from the Muslim Student Association answered the question that David Horowitz posed to her I'm a Jew, and Hezbollah wants me to be in Israel so that he doesn't have to hunt me down and kill me when I'm somewhere else around the globe. Are you for or against that? And she says to his face that she is for it. So not only is this chilling, not only is this horrifying, not only is this evil, it tells us that this ideology that we are seeing manifesting in our country in the wake of Hamas's attack on Israel this past week is not new. That we may be surprised at the large numbers of leftists who are supporting Hamas massacring Jews in Israel, but that we are only surprised by the number because we haven't been properly paying attention to this ideology festering. Now, why is that? It's not because conservatives have ignored anti-Semitism. We've been noting the anti-Semitic connections, of, especially in Democratic Party leadership for a long time when Barack Obama posed with Louis Farrakhan after the Congressional Black Caucus invited Louis Farrakhan, a known and rabid anti-Semite, 
to speak to them, and Barack Obama posed next to him, smiling. We've noted that. We've condemned that. We've also noted that these pro-Palestinian groups on college campuses across the country aren't just pro-Palestinian people. They're not just pro-peace. They are anti-Israel. They are anti-Semitic. And yet we've relegated them to, we've labeled them as perhaps being the fringe. They are the radicals of the radicals on college campus. So how did this become so mainstream within leftist thought? And I'd like to propose the reason why. The reason why is because the left has been crying wolf since at least 2015, if not longer than that. At least the last decade, the left, every time they are engaging in a cultural argument, anytime they are engaging in a political campaign, anytime they are engaging in a policy, quote unquote, discussion, they look at Republicans, they point to conservatives, and they say, you're a white supremacist. You're a Nazi. You're anti-Semitic. They just called they just called Elon Musk anti-Semitic because he wouldn't censor something that they wanted him to censor, that the ADL wanted him to censor that had nothing to do with white supremacy. They, they, they use these labels against people where the labels don't fit. You and I are not, are not racist. We are not anti-Semitic. We are not Nazis. Yet even a Democrat member of Congress two weeks ago just blanket labeled Republicans Nazis. This started, we saw, we saw this, this tactic from the left gaining prevalence when during the 2015 Democratic primary, you'd have the Bernie bros saying, punch a Nazi. This was an Antifa thing, punch a Nazi. And all conservatives and all Republicans, before Hillary Clinton called us a basket of deplorables, before we were labeled as domestic violent extremists, we were called white supremacists. We were called Nazis. We were called anti-Semitic, and it wasn't true. But what happens when false allegations like this are levied so constantly against people where it's just not true. Well, the rest of the country gets desensitized to what those words really mean. So if you call Donald Trump a Nazi just because you don't like him, just because you're a Democrat, and you hear that over and over and over, then you kind of start tuning out that word because it loses its meaning, it loses its impact. Then when there actually is Nazi ideology, and someone points it out and says, look, there are Nazis on college campuses. There are quote unquote, pro-Palestinian activists who are espousing the ideology of Adolf Hitler. They are calling for the genocide, the extermination of Jews. We don't necessarily hear that because it just bounces off of us because we are so used to the constancy of the false allegations from the left of all Republicans being Nazis and all Republicans being white supremacists. And so here we are in our country today, not only supporting our ally Israel, against this horrific, the, the biggest massacre of Jews since the Holocaust. But we're facing this domestic uprising where this shockingly large number of Americans are justifying the rape of women and the massacre of families and the torture of young men and the decapitation of babies because these people are Jews, 